There be a glint of metal in the distance. Could be a cannon, could be a musket. Aye, I see it, little Petey. Ah, tis no cannon or musket. It be metal, though. Silver, it be gold. No, not silver or gold, little Petey. Aluminum. Who's the chef that you know? It's Chef Bill. Hello, friends. Chef Bill here. This episode is about frozen dinners. I'm going to be making my own frozen dinner or a TV dinner, just like uh, you used to have when you were a kid. I found these aluminum trays that are made in the USA and they come with a paper lid that has a silver face and a paper face and you just put the silver face down on the on the aluminum tray and you seal up the edges. These aluminum frozen dinner trays have no plastic in them. They're going to be 100% recyclable and they could even be reused if you wash out the aluminum tray. Friends, there's a lot of reasons to make a frozen dinner. Maybe you want to make one for yourself or your family so you don't have to cook every night and you can just put something in the oven. Or maybe you want to make it for a friend or a family member who doesn't get out much or doesn't have the ability to go to the store. This is a great way to make a homemade meal for someone that you care about. I'm going to show you how to make four kinds of frozen dinners. One for a meat eater, one for a pescatarian, one for a vegetarian, and one for a vegan. Every step of the way, I'm going to try to make this really easy and simple to put together. Are you ready to get started? Come on! Little Beatty, I see it! Golden medallions! Dozens of, of gold medallions! <laughs> we'll be rich! <laughs> we'll be rich, little Beatty! <laughs> There's no golden medallions in this kitchen. I used turmeric to make the ravioli dough look like gold. I'll show you how I did it. Come on. We start with two cups of all-purpose flour. Measure that out and put it in a mixer. If you have a KitchenAid mixer, all the better. I'm putting in a tablespoon of turmeric, turmeric powder. Uh, this will just add color and a little bit of flavor uh, to the ravioli dough. A tablespoon of salt. I'm going to put on my kneading dough hook on my KitchenAid mixer and just mix the dry ingredients for now. Once the dry ingredients are mixed up, I'm going to add one egg and start the uh, mixer going again. Then I'm going to add the second egg when that has been a little bit incorporated into the mixture. If this is for a vegan, you do not add eggs, of course. You could just add some extra olive oil. For this recipe, I'm going to add one tablespoon of olive oil. You could add more. You could add soy or plant-based margarine um, as a non-dairy alternative. Keep a quarter cup of some warm water on hand and add it if your dough is too dry. You'll have to check it for yourself, but what you want is a consistency like a soft clay or a soft Play-Doh. Um, you'll know when you get it. Go ahead and let that sit once you've got it for about half an hour. Then we'll roll out the ravioli. Now you can roll out your ravioli with a number of different methods. I'm using an extension on my KitchenAid mixer, which is really handy. I'm just starting at the widest gate setting and slowly rolling it out. You could use a hand uh, cranked pasta roller or just a rolling pin if that's all you have. You want to try to get that dough as thin as you possibly can without having it tear easily. It's a little tricky and use a lot of extra flour. That helps. One of the tools I have in my kitchen is this cutting wheel that has a straight edge and a scalloped edge. The scalloped edge is really great for cutting up uh, ravioli, so I'm going to be using that. You could just use a knife if you want to. The first type of ravioli I'm going to make is beef ravioli, and that's really easy to make. I started with a pound of ground beef that I ground myself, uh, browned it in a skillet with a little olive oil, 
put some salt and pepper on that and that's all it needs after you cook the uh, ground beef transfer that to a bowl add one egg any kind of breadcrumbs that you have add two tablespoons of breadcrumbs while mixing it up I add a few drops of olive oil this helps the ground beef stick together a little bit easier, gives it a little more body. The second ravioli I'm going to make is a vegetarian. The vegetarian filling is fried kale and ricotta cheese with a little salt and pepper. I'm going to fry up a handful of kale until it gets a little crispy. Cut that up and then put it in a bowl and add some ricotta cheese. I'm going to put about two cups of ricotta cheese to, you know, to a good couple handfuls of uh, fried kale. To that, I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. And that is my vegetarian ravioli filling. The next one is fish or pescatarian. I had about a half pound of leftover salmon in my refrigerator, so I'm going to use that. To that, I'm adding about three tablespoons of cream cheese. Now, you can get your own ratio the way you'd like it, but this works for me. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of sesame chili oil. Make sure that you're adding the one that has actual sesame oil in it, not just chili flavorings with cottonseed oil or something like that. Here's a little bit of celery salt and a little bit of ground ginger for that extra flavor I'm looking for. And the final ravioli is butternut squash for the vegan ravioli. For the butternut squash, just get a butternut squash and cut it in half. Then uh, take out the seeds, put it in a baking dish, and let it cook at 375 until it is tender. Remove the skins and put the mash into a bowl. I just added a little bit of salt to this one, so it's pretty simple. To actually make the ravioli, wet the edges or the sides of the dough and press it down around your filling. Do that well because you do not want these to become separated when they're cooking. Now I'm taking my knife. Again, you could use a regular knife. I like the treatment of the scalloped edges on mine. And that is it. Now we have four different types of ravioli. A meat, vegetarian, pescatarian, and vegan. And that is my recipe for gold medallion ravioli with four different types of filling. I'm gonna let these dry for a while and move on to my sauce. I'm filling up a baking sheet with Roma tomatoes that have had their cores removed. I roasted the tomatoes in a 350 degree oven. Once they're cooled down after that, the skin should peel off quite easily. As I peel the tomatoes, I put them in a food processor. I'm going to add three garlic cloves to my peeled tomatoes and a big handful of fresh parsley. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of dried oregano to that and my secret ingredient, anise seed. I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of anise seed to my mixture and blend it thoroughly. Once blended, I'm going to take my tomato sauce and put it on the boil. I want to bring it to the boil and reduce a little bit of the liquid in it, but not too much. And that's it for the sauce. Put that aside. I see it! I see it, Captain! What be seeing you, little Petey? It be coins! Coins are plenty! Give me that, you scallywag! <laughs> See it? Coins are plenty. Coins are plenty. <laughs> Those coins of plenty are actually carrot slices. I'm going to use a very simple recipe to put this one together. 
With my fresh carrots, I'm going to cut them into about quarter inch slices. I'm going to arrange my carrots in a baking dish and add about a tablespoon worth of butter on top. To that, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of sucanat. You can use any kind of sugar that you want for this recipe. I'm going to cook these carrots in a 350 degree oven for a little while, just until they're tender. Remember, they're going to be cooked again in the frozen dinner. What an ill-fated wind has blown my ship to such a cold, cold part of the ocean. Freezing I am! Little Petey, are you freezing as well? Aye, aye, uh, Captain. To be cold, freezing. Freezing. Oh. Oh. Better. That'd be a wee bit better. <laughs> this next one is really easy. I just got some frozen peas and put them in one of the containers and then put a piece of butter on top and that was it. What be that sound I hear? Captain! Tis the most beautiful sound my ears have ever heard. Yes, little Petey. <laughs> Chocolate cake. A most wonderful, beautiful sound. Swing the mizzen mast. Turn the ship around. Head due north toward those jagged peaks. Chocolate cake. Little Petey, I must find the source of that sound. It's delicious. It's scrumptious. It's, it's what I must have. <laughs> closer, closer to the rocky shore. We're almost there, Little Petey. We're almost there. Friends, don't worry. I haven't forgotten about dessert. I'm going to show you how to make a vegan chocolate cake that will be amazing and it's so easy to make. I'm going to use the metal container to bake it, take it out of the oven, and then let it cool down, and then I build my frozen dinner after that part is done. It's so simple. I'm going to use my mixer again and start with a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Then I'm going to take a teaspoon of baking soda and add that. Now this is a vegan recipe, so we're going to be relying on baking soda and baking powder. And a teaspoon of salt. One half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Now this is the important part. We have a Hershey's cocoa. This is unsweetened, you know, there's no sugar in this. It's just pure cocoa. So I want to add two big tablespoons of that to our mixture. Now three tablespoons of sucanat. And you can use any sugar that you like. Brown sugar would probably be good, but this is a natural sugar and it'll do well in our recipe. I'm going to throw in one banana as well. Now I'm going to mix the dry ingredients with the banana until they're incorporated. One half cup of water. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of a plant-based margarine. It's a non-dairy butter and this will again sort of help us because we are not using eggs. Now mix everything well until you get a cake-like batter consistency. If it's too dry you can add a little more water. Now we get our container. I put a little melted soy margarine uh, in the dessert compartment and filled it to about halfway. It'll, it'll rise in the oven, so we only want it to go halfway for now. Putting it in a 350 degree oven, put as many as you're going to make frozen dinners. I'm gonna make two this time around. Now when it's done, 
it'll rise and you'll know it's cooked all the way through by placing a small stick or something like that into the middle and pulling it out clean. I'm going to dust my vegan muffin with a little confectioner's sugar uh, while it's still warm. Once it's cooled, we are ready to assemble our frozen dinner. I'm going to cook my golden medallion ravioli in boiling water for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now remember, we're going to cook it again in the frozen dinner, so you want it to be well cooked but not overcooked. It'll get cooked again when you reheat the frozen dinner anyway. When those raviolis are done, layer them in the larger section of your metal tray. You want to have about a little more than halfway full. Now the sauce, you should put completely over your ravioli. This will help protect it when it's being frozen. I add my carrots to the long section of the tray because they fit well. Now take your frozen green peas, just put them in the last section and add a pat of butter. After everything is completely cooled down, you take your paper that has a silvered back and put the silver towards the food. Crimp those sides completely you want to make sure that this package is as airtight as you can possibly make it. Once you're done, put it in the freezer. It's been a few days and I'm ready to have my frozen dinner. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees and put my frozen dinner in for a half an hour. When it comes out of the oven, carefully peel back that aluminum and remove the paper. Your dinner is ready to eat. It's good little PT. It's a good meal indeed. <laughs> indeed. Um, I like some meat, so it's what I eat. Oh, I love the sea, so it's fish for me. <laughs> well, friends, I hope you have enjoyed this journey. And I hope you have been inspired to make your own frozen dinner. Make it for yourself, your family, your friends, or whomever you think would appreciate a homemade meal from you. Until next time, happy cooking from Chef Bill. <laughs>